Good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Canon Fodder, the channel for our Arsenal fans all over this world. Wednesday afternoon show here. And I'm not going about to give you a weather report because it's absolutely disgusting weather outside. Absolutely disgusting. But we're not here to talk about the weather, are we? We're here to talk about Arsenal. And there's some comments, some thoughts, some um, reflections um, from our previous manager. Actually, it wasn't a manager. It was actually um, given the coaching role. There was a mistake from Arsenal. But our previous coach, yeah, Unai Emi, speaking about Arsenal, his thoughts about the current manager, certain players. And I thought, wow, my goodness, Unai Emery. You know how I feel about Unai Emery and Arsenal, and Arsenal and Unai Emery. But um, we're going to be talking about that, going through in, in it, uh, picking, picking the, the bits and pieces out of that. But there's also comments in regards to Thomas Partey and Tommy Asher injuries, and um, thoughts from Ian Wright about um, Nuno Tavares. What do we do about Nuno Tavares? What do we do about Nuno Tavares? Now, there is a poll about Nuno Tavares, but I'll get into that on the other side of this music intro. Yes, indeedy. Welcome back, indeedy, to Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Wednesday afternoon, it's like um, 60 minutes after the hour, 3 p.m., actually local time, UK time, GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. And if you're going to thinking, what is GMT? Uh, listen, I don't have the time to explain to you. But anyway, anyway, what you can do before we get into this one, this segment, that I wasn't actually thinking... To do, I think. Should I do it? Should I do? It? Should I give him a day's rest? Should I give Alex a day's rest? Does he deserve a day's rest? Do my subscribers deserve a day's rest? I say, you know what, Alex and the subscribers of Rose do not deserve a day's rest from any live uh, segments on Canal Forty TV. So we are here. We are live from somewhere in the universe, somewhere on uh, planet Earth, somewhere in England, somewhere in London, somewhere in North London. I'm not telling you where. But anyway, what you can do, like it says, is to subscribe. Subscribe to Canon for the TV right there and right now. All right, so let's get into this one then. So, yeah, for me, oh, goodness, where is it? Oh, uh, Unai Emine. Where shall we start? Well, anyway, anyway, Unai Emine claims Arsenal did not want to sack him and pinpoints where Mikel Arteta has been fortunate. Unai Emery claims Arsenal's board was reluctant to sack him and believes Mick Arteta has been fortunate the club's fans have remained so patient during difficult times. The former Gunners uh, boss has uh, rebuilt his reputation at Villarreal. Well, he never misses, he didn't lose his reputation. His reputation was intact, thank you very much, uh, for a difficult 18 months in North London, which culminated in his dismissal back in November of 2019. God, my goodness, a time has flown. Emery exacted a, a measure of revenge on Arsenal last season after the Yellow Submarines knocked out Arsenal out of the Europa League before uh, defeating uh, Man United in the final. So fourth time now, Europa League uh, uh, winner there. He went on to say, five captains left in the first year. There were many changes and patience uh, was needed, he told uh, another platform detailing some of the issues he encountered after he was appointed as Arsenal Wenger's successor. It was not an easy process. The fans did not have patience. Shaka had problems with the fans. And in the dressing room, there were <coughs> unexperienced players that did not understand his role as uh, captain. Shaka was an important player for me. I was surprised that you said that. Uh, he was a good person, very committed uh, to his coach. Now, the club wasn't happy with me, but the fans were calling for a change, and it had to happen. Now, Emmy created a path into the first team for both Bukayo Saka and Emma Swift Rowe, uh, two academy graduates who have established themselves uh, as a component of Arteta's real build. And it's funny, before I go on, that people still believe that it was, it was Mikel Arteta. It was not Mikel Arteta. It wasn't, it wasn't Mick Arteta, it was Unai Emery who gave Bakayo Saka and also throw their debuts at Arsenal. But anyway, so you know, people will be selective with their, with their memories anyway. And he said, yeah, so um, the, uh, that was uh, the change. Um, Saka and Smith 
and began to play with me. He said, I gave Saka his uh, Premier League uh, debut against Fulham on January the 1st when he was just 17. You had to work with these young players who replaced those who were there before. Uh, Martinelli, who had arrived then too, I knew he was a, a player who would grow. Uh, they were, <coughs> sorry, they, they have uh, put together a group who are all going in the same direction, working together and um, showing respect. He says, I knew that whoever began after Wenger, it was difficult for people to understand the changes that had to be made. Arteta is doing a good job, continue, continue what I began. Uh, he has uh, had the patience from the fans, that the patience they did not have uh, with me, but I understand that. And I thought, ah, oh, my goodness. Um, I, let me kind of pick the bones out of this. Um, I've got the utmost respect for Unai Emery. I've got a lot of time for Unai Emery. But I will remain passionate about my club, which is Arsenal FC. But what I don't like is, is how we 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 treat um, managers. Now, Arteta has been here for almost three years. Three years that we weren't willing to give to Unai Emery. But he's just... The, the blow by blow, just saying as well about Gwennett Shaka was integral. And it's funny, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't rate Gwennett Shaka, but Mikko Arteta has probably seen the same thing that Una Emery has seen in this player. Had lots of problems. And when he's speaking about even the players didn't understand Gwennett Shaka's role as a captain, that was quite telling as well. But, um, you know, all in all, I, I thought, you know, I give kudos. I give so much respect to Unai Emery. You can come into the live chat. Let me know your thoughts about the latest comments from Unai Emery, where he got <coughs> the that the board did not want to, um, they didn't want to sack him. But it was the pressure from the media, the players down in tools. I mean, I've said this so many times before, so many times before. But it goes down to what I said before about when a face fits. And when a face does not fit in a particular place, I'm talking like I've been there. I've been there. I've been there before. When your face fits, it fits. When it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. But um, yeah, so um, they're, they're in um, action uh, tonight. Villarreal against a PSG, I believe. And um, I'm hoping, is it PSG? Is it PSG? It's not PSG, is it? One, se well, one second, one second, people. One second, one second. Let me double, double, double check that. Uh, the quarterfinals, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's um, uh, Bayern Munich at the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Why did I say PSG for? I know you, I know you managed uh, PSG previously. But, yeah, come into live chat. Let me know your thoughts about, yeah, Unai Emery, man, just giving us the blow by blow. Wow, my goodness, about the players, Bukhaya Saka and Swift Bro, you know, about lack of patience among, amongst the fan base. And uh, Mikko Arteta actually just carrying on the torch, what he began, and the fan base literally not understanding that after Arsene Wenger, changes would needed to happen. And a lot of people just didn't understand that. But anyway, anyway. So um, the next segment we'll talk about is in regards to, is it an update? Is it is it really an update? Uh, Thomas Partey and Tommy Ashu, a little bit of update from the um, Arsenal's website that says that Tommy Ashu would not be in full training until at least after the match at Southampton on April 16th. Uh, that means he will at least miss uh, Saturday's visit to Brighton and a trip to St Mary's. Party, meanwhile, will be uh, assessed in the coming days. So uh, it's not looking good, to be honest, in regards to uh, Thomas Party. After the loss at Selhurst Pass, um, Arteta hinted it would not be good news over the Guardian's fitness. So he said, I, I don't know, but he got something in the same area uh, that he got injured previously. So it's a big concern. <coughs> Granit Xhaka um, was used, as we know, as a left back. Actually, he was used left back uh, last season, wasn't he? Uh, in the second half against Crystal Palace for a poor uh, first half showing uh, from Nuno Tavares. But part of his injury now reduces Arteta's options in the midfield. I mean, Xhaka may, may just be switched into back into that position again. That means Tavares is likely to retain a, a starting a spot against Brighton on Saturday. Asked why he took the Portuguese off <laughs> at halftime. Arteta did say uh, today was just a tactical uh, reason for how I wanted uh, to do it with uh, that Palace uh, was doing and how we could attack and control the game much better in that position. I don't believe you, Mikko Arteta. I don't believe you. Uh, and actually, the, the last segment we'll talk about very quickly is in regards to um, Nuno Tavares. Uh, I, I do feel sorry for him. 
a baptism of fire. And Ian Wright um, has come to defense of uh, Nuno Tavares after the Arsenal defeat. Ian Wright has told his um, his, uh, his uh, writer's show or house that he believes that Nuno Tavares would develop into a fantastic player uh, uh, at Arsenal as long as he gets the right coaching. Uh, Tavares enjoyed a difficult uh, time right now. He has been taken off uh, prematurely in the last two starts for the Gunners. He enjoyed a tough time during the first half at Selhurst Park. The Portuguese made a mistake in the build-up and the second goal, and it seemed that Arteta felt that Granite Shaka would be a bet better in that position after the break. Well, he got a yellow card, didn't he, Granite Shaka? Unfortunately, Tavares was replaced uh, even uh, earlier in the FA Cup uh, back in January. Now, Wright has suggested that Tavares uh, has the potential to bounce back. And he clearly wants uh, to see the 22-year-old get the chance to put things right with the Gunners. <coughs> uh, there's things he's working on, but you look at someone like Tavares and you, you think to yourself, I just hope he's getting the coaching that he needs uh, at the moment. We know that he's fantastic. He's a fantastic player. He can be attacking and we couldn't get out uh, against Palace. Uh, we had to take it on the chin. So those have been, or these have been the comments, uh, comments, the new segments currently running on this Wednesday after show on Canon 40 TV. Again, come into the live chat. Let me know your thoughts about Unai Emery, his thoughts, and about the situation with the situation with the injuries, Tommy Ashu and Thomas Party. Again, we know that you know Kieran Tinney is out until the end of the season. But yeah. So actually, before I read the um, the uh, the live uh, comments. Uh, we did do a poll, actually, before we went live. The poll, the poll, the poll. And the poll was in regards to, um, yeah, you know, uh, Tavares. Should he retain his place? I mean, I've already said, I think he should retain his place. There's no reason for him to be um, dropped to the bench. And actually, we're, we're quite thin on the ground anyway. So let's just have a look here and see what are the thoughts of the subscribers on Canon 4 TV. Oh, my goodness. So I know it's early days, but so does Nuno Tawadis keep his place? Choose only one. A straight yes or no. Out of 42 votes in the last, I'll say maybe 10, just like 10 minutes, there's no comments just yet and it's just two likes. 43% of you say that he should retain his place and 57 say that no, he should not. I'm in the 43% camp. Yeah, I think if you take him like that could compound, compound his lack of confidence. I mean, how you get confidence? You've got to be in the fire. Stay in the fire, man. That's the testament to what the kind of kind of character that you have. But um, that's just me. That's just me. So let me just see. Let me kind of refresh the page here. So 42 votes. You can look. You can have your say. You can vote. Uh, go on to the platform, uh, the community tab, and vote either yes or no for that all right so it's um let's see who's in the live chat for this uh it's gonna be a short show a short show i want to have a siesta yeah i want to have a siesta <laughs> jonasai says a big up bro and big up to you my friend big up big up and he says it again twice okay is there an echo in here big up big up bro big up big up big up big up big up and our moderator for the office shows. Hello, hello, uh, good day, uh, Alex and chat room, and uh, good day to you as well, Gary. Nuno needs uh, same support from a manager as other players get. He can't sit for weeks and then come on and perform. Too young for that. Unexperienced players can perform uh, when idle. Example: Lacazette. So yeah, I agree. I agree. He's got we've got to retain him. Got to keep him in that position there. Otherwise, you further compound the lack of confidence that the guy, I mean, oh, my goodness. I do really, really feel sorry for him, you know, but he will learn from this. But taking him out, dropping him, he's not going to learn from that, is he? He's not going to learn from it. So, for me, he's got to play on Saturday. He's got to play. All right. Uh, okay, we're a, little bit, we're a little bit slow, aren't we? What's going on? What's going on, people? Uh, let's just make sure that we are... Free flowing on Twitter sphere. Ah, here we go. Here we go. I just remind everyone that we are live. There we go. Pow. There we go. 
Right. So, so come on, guys. Let me know your thoughts about the latest comments from our previous coach. Because he wasn't labelled as the manager. He wasn't given the manager of the position. He was the coach of Arsenal, Unai Emery. Actually, just saying about Granite Shaka. I was surprised about that actually. Saying about those five captains, they really couldn't understand, you know, what his position was. He was trying to change, and the fan base just didn't understand that, and the board didn't want to sack him. It literally was the pressure from the fan base, the media, and the players just down in tools. Disrespectful. Uh, also, give me your thoughts about going forward on Saturday. You can come in and tell me your predictions if you want to. There will be a live watch along. My brother has said, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do the watch along. I said, all right, good luck to you, bro. <laughs> good luck, guys. Uh, no, I ain't down for that, man. I ain't down. But there will be a live watch along come Saturday. In regards to the time, the kicking off, um, we're not we're not even at the stage there. But when my brother goes live, you've got to make sure that you've seen a notification. You won't see the notification if you have not subscribed. I can tell you right about now, you won't see the notification. Anyway, anyway. Um, before I go any further, I'll give you guys a quick heads up what's happening in the next couple of days. So um, on Friday, this coming Friday, it is the comeback, the comeback of comebacks for the easier talk. And boy, is it going to be a really, really good one. Now, I know I always say this. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a special one because we have a special guest, a special guest. And I'm not talking about El Taylor, Ridge Godfather, even though he is special, or Tim, uh, Dan, uh, K. and Day Lewis, and of course, uh, John the Geezer. But we have a special guest. And I'm not, uh, the, the way I wanted Canafoy to go in a direction, it, it hasn't gone in that direction, but. I just view Canterbury TV as our community, not where we have ex-footballers come on channel. But Friday, I can't say nothing more than that. Make sure you tune in 7.30 p.m. UK time. It's going to be a really, really good one. Also, we're going to be talking about, yeah, the, 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 the game, the imminent game against uh, Brighton. Uh, bogey team, bogey team, yeah. So come on, guys, come into a live chat. Um, I can see the probably people are probably feeling a bit like the weather, thinking, ah, you know, the damp squid, it's cold outside, it's rainy. I'm not going to bother, you know, saying anything in a live chat. I can't be asked. Can't be bothered. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play you the video that I've been playing for the longest time now. Now, the video is in regards to you changing or wanting to change your life because nobody can force you to change your situation or your life. But if you say, oh, I hope things are going to change, I hope things are going to get better, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. For things to change, you have to change. For things to change, you have to change. You have to be the change. So I understand about the fuel prices, actually the price of living in the UK, and I don't know about the rest of the world. I think maybe it's probably the same for the rest of the world. The, the fuel prices, the price of living has shot through the roof. The roof? The roof. The roof is on fire. However, you have two choices. I'm going to give you two choices. You can sit there and complain about your situation, or you can sit there, complain about your situation, and do something about it. Now, this opportunity, or this video I'm about to talk about, it talks about Passive income, if you didn't know about it. Passive income is leveraging money you have and the money working for you, not you working for the money. That's the traditional way that we were always taught. You, you know, you leave uh, college or university, you go and find yourself a job, earn a living. But passive income, it will create a life for you. You won't have to worry about paying the next bill or you know, buying food for your family. Passive income works for everyone. But this message is not for everyone. Because not everyone is looking for a way out. People will complain, but they won't do anything about it. And I, I read somewhere that 95% of the people give up. 95% of the people give up. But 95% of the people work for the 5 percenters. I know which camp I prefer to be. I prefer to be in the 5 percenters. So have a look at this video. Again, this message is not for everyone. But if you are that person just sitting there, you know, just notching on your, your popcorn or drinking your 
your your fizzy drink this message is for you you might be saying oh actually alex you know what i'm fed up of being fed up i'm tired of being tired so show me this 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 thing this opportunity alex i will show you this opportunity but you need to reach out to me how do you do that you do that by sending me an email like it says at the bottom arsenal republic one at gmail.com Like they say, you know, you can walk the horse to the water, but you can't force the horse to drink the water. Now, I'm probably um, describing human beings as being horses. I can't do that for you, but I can show you, but I can't, I can't do it for you. So have a look at the video. And I'll see the other side. I'm just showing this video because I can notice that we've got five people watching now. I'll give the live chat some time to heat up and warm up to see it in a few ticks. I have learned from the life I live that there are opportunities all around us if we will only just look and listen. With opportunities comes risk and rejection, yes, but imagine looking back and saying I did that rather than waiting until it was too late. If you want passive income and a sense of personal freedom, act now. This is not for everyone, not everyone is looking. If you are that person, contact us now, ask for a public one at gmail.com so like the video says it, this message is not for everyone because a lot of people are just happy being in the rat race you know like the the guinea pig on a spinning wheel in the cage that's the rat race i ain't no guinea pig man i'm no guinea pig but <laughs> anyway so again if you are interested you want to know me i mean you owe it to yourself so at least inquire and find out what is this situation about passive income. The passive income might just help me get out of, of this situation. Reach out, send me an email, arsworldpublic1 at gmail.com. All right. Okay. So I've just kind of refreshed the page in regards to the vote, the vote, the question that we put on the platform in regards to Nuno Tavares. Does Nuno Tavares retain his place on Saturday? And I'm actually quite surprised at the results. Well, not the results, but the, the, as it stands of now. 64 votes, no comments, but three thumbs up. The question again, does Nuno Tavares keep his place? 41% of you say, yes, he does. And 59 say, yeah, no, he doesn't. You horrible lot. You horrible lot. <laughs> All right, okay. So I guess, I imagine literally it's going to be a short show, which is fine. It's okay, it's a short show. We'll be running for like um, two minutes short, actually one minute short of 25 minutes. And it's okay, it's all right. So um, what I'm going to say is a thank you to each and every one of you tuning in on this Wednesday afternoon show. I will be back tomorrow morning giving some more live news segments in regards to um, Arsenal. Yeah, we'll be talking about Arsenal. And maybe some other bits and pieces as well, kind of sandwiched in between that at the same time so um a quick reminder that you have been watching um this wonderful channel of ours do not forget to subscribe if you do anything else in your life you've got to subscribe because if you don't i'll come find you <laughs> all right i'm out of here uh, enjoy the remnants of your day and you have been listening and watching canon fodder the channel for Arsenal fans all over